This video is going to be about the normal distribution. Please don't forget to subscribe. Alright, so let's talk about the normal probability distribution, which is a continuous, symmetrical, bell-shaped distribution of a normal random variable. To describe the normal distribution, we use mu, which is the population mean, and sigma, which is the population standard deviation. And that's how the normal looks, where mu is the mean again, and it's population mean, and then sigma, which is the population standard deviation. Now mean, one word to describe mean, of course, is a balance, right, an average, and one word to describe um, the population standard deviation or standard deviation is spread. All right, so let's talk about some of the properties of the normal distribution. The first property is the curve is continuous, which means that it's a smooth curve. Okay. Uh, the second property is the curve is bell-shaped. And yes, it does have that bell shape to it. It's not square or something. Okay. Um, the third property is the curve is symmetrical about the mean. Well, here's the mean again, and it's symmetrical. Uh, one side is the same as the other. So uh, it's balanced. And number four, the mean, the median, and the mode are equal to each other. Um, that's no surprise if you looked at the other video on skewedness you'll know that the mean median mode are all the same when you have a normal curve a symmetrical curve and number five uh, curve never touches the x-axis you'll notice that the curve will never touch the x and it shouldn't okay and number six, the area under the curve is one. So the area under the curve is one, or 100%. And that's the whole point in doing these problems. Distribution, um, when you find the area under the curve, or the area of, under the whole curve, it's one. And number seven, the distribution is described by mu and sigma. Mu just tells you the mean the position where in the x-axis and sigma just says how spread out uh, your bell curve is. So let's look at some examples here. Let's look at some examples of the normal distributions. So here's a normal. We'll call it C1 or curve 1. Okay? And um, You'll notice that it has a mu of 1, right? Mu meaning the mean has some mean, and it has some type of, some type of um, spread, right? So this curve has two pieces, the mean and how spread it is. Let's draw another one. Let's draw curve 2. You'll see that it has a different type of spread. So Here's some observations. The first one is that the mu for the first curve is the same for the second curve, and that's true. You can see that both curves, right, are right at the same location. So the tops of these curves are exactly the same. So they have the same mean. What other thing can we observe? Well, the second observation is that the spread of the first one is larger than the spread of the second one. And that's true. Who's more spread out? Well, curve one seems to be more spread out than the second curve. You'll notice that the first curve, if you draw a line, right, and 
you, you notice that from mu, you draw a line all the way to the first curve. That's longer or more spread than if you draw from the, from the mean to the second curve. That distance is shorter. So the spread of the first curve is much um, wider than the second curve. And that's why you have the spread of the first one, or the standard deviation, or the population standard deviation of the first one, is larger than the second one. Okay. So, let's draw something else. Let's draw curve number one. Again, you have mu one, right? That's the mean. And you have some type of spread, right? some type of population uh, standard deviation. And when I say mu, um, don't forget it's population mean. Okay, and let's draw the second curve. And what do you see here? It looks like they look the same, but uh, they seem to have different uh, mu's because over here we got mu two, and over here we got mu one. So the locations of the means are different. And remember, this is the x-axis, right? So values going this way are larger. So let's look at some observations. Let's see. The first one is that mu1 is less than mu2, or that mu1 does not equal to mu2, and that's true. Uh, you can see that mu1, and here's mu2, the one means curve one, right? And mu two means curve two. But you can see that mu one is less than mu two. That's true. And of course, mu one does not equal to mu two. That's true. What other observations can we discover? Ah, seems like the spreads on curve one and curve two are the same. They're not super perfect but the spread of curve 1 is the same as the spread of curve 2. Okay, Okay. let's try something else. Let's erase this. And there is another one, curve 1, with mu 1. Okay, And of course a standard deviation or standard a population standard deviation of one and of course mu is also a population mean and let's draw another one curve two with its own mu mu two and its own spread sigma two okay so what can we observe well definitely uh, mu one and mu two are not the same right they're not in the same location. And it looks like the spreads are might be different. This one seems to be more spread out, curve one, than curve two. So let's see. Um, yes, that's true. Mu one does not equal to mu two, right? Here's mu one, here's mu two. They can't be the same, right? And mu one is going to be smaller, right, than mu two because it's on the left. That's true. Okay, and what else? Sigma, right? The sigmas are not the same because the spread of the curve, right, seems to be different. Seems like curve one is more spread out than curve two. And um, it means that curve two, because curve two is not as wide or spread out, right? So this sigma 2, and here's sigma 1, right? It seems like the, uh, sta the population standard deviation of the second one seems to be smaller than the spread or the uh, population standard deviation of the first one. So that seems to be true as well. All right. So um, don't forget to subscribe.